Oh. It was a regular Saturday night. Uh huh. I wasn't in the best mood as I had to babysit my little eight-year-old cousin Alex that night. Aww. My aunt and uncle were heading out of town for the night with my parents, and they needed a babysitter. That's odd. Of course, my parents just had to volunteer me. Yep. My dad offered to pay me thirty bucks to take Alex to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. I would have rather stayed yep. home and just watched TV, but making thirty bucks to sit at a pizzeria and watch animatronics for an hour at most mm -hmm. seemed like a good deal. Mm -hmm. Before leaving, my dad handed me fifty bucks, oh. the extra twenty for whatever the the cost was for the food and games. <gasps> I would obviously pocket the change. Uh-huh. My aunt and uncle dropped Alex off as they left with my parents. Yep. I greeted Alex and tried talking to him, although I didn't expect much conversation from an eight-year-old. Yeah. It was around eight o'clock when we left. I had never been to this place. I imagined it would be like Chuck E. Cheese. Oh. I did, however, know that this place had a bad history and that it would be closed by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Alex seemed excited on the way there. I couldn't relate. I remember having always been afraid of those singing animatronics Aww. these kinds of places when I was younger. Yep. We got there at around 8.15. The last show of the night started at around 8.30. Uh-huh. I remember outside seeing a help wanted sign for a security guard. I wondered why a place like this would even need a security guard, but I shrugged it off. We sat down at a table and I got a pizza for us. It tasted no better than a frozen pizza or what you would get at a Chuck E. Cheese. I didn't expect much more, though. The atmosphere seemed a little outdated, like something that would fit in the early 90s. The place wasn't particularly nice or clean, but it was still very popular, which made me wonder mm -hmm. what could have happened to make it have to close by the end of the year. Mm. While eating, there was suddenly a loud drum roll, followed by a voice introducing the characters. <laughs> the kids all Dang cheered it. as the curtains opened up, revealing three animatronic singers. Yeah. Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica. Mm hmm I was shocked. These animatronics looked old and a lot less Odd. detailed than I was expecting. They looked creepy. Yes. As they sang their first song, Alex, along with all the other kids, seemed to be enjoying it. Even most of the parents seemed to be smiling and having a nice time. But I just stared with a blank expression on my face. Uh-huh. The animatronics' movements were pretty smooth and impressive, though. I guess they made up for the looks. <laughs> After they finished their first song, the chicken in the back, Chica... I swear, turn its head and look straight at me. Gasp! Wasn't I'm not afraid. Chance. Its eyes were fixed right on me. Yep. I stared back, a little freaked out. Mm-hmm. Maybe they were programmed to make eye contact like this, but for how long? Probably forever. Staring at me for at least 30 seconds. Both the other animatronics were turning their heads and eyes to look at the whole crowd, but not Chica. <laughs> it wasn't until the next song started that Chica finally started moving its head again. Mm-hmm. I felt a bit relieved, considering maybe I was just being a little paranoid, letting my childhood fear of animatronics get the better of me. Yeah. At least Alex seemed to be enjoying himself. The song went on for about three minutes before ending. Oh. I had at this point completely calmed down until it happened again. Yep, yep, yep. As the song ended, Chica turned its head to face me, eyes locked onto mine. But this time... Mm. Bonnie turned its head to me as well, mm -hmm. making eye contact. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? I said. Holy cow. Obviously loud enough for Alex to hear me, as he looked at me with a curious That's eye. odd. I pointed out to Alex that the two animatronics were looking at me. He didn't even acknowledge what I said. <laughs> as Freddy spoke to the audience, both Bonnie and Chica's fake eyes were locked onto mine. My heart started uh... beating twice as fast. At this point, I was freaking out in my seat. Why was nobody turning around to see what the two robots That's were saying? Was anybody acknowledging what was happening? Yeah. I got up out of my seat to go refill my soda at the fountains, frightened to look behind me at the stage. Oh, the party my room. I stalled by slowly putting on a new lid and straw. I was just waiting for the next song to start or some kind of intermission. Uh huh. I just couldn't turn around to look at the stage. No. Suddenly, I heard Alex call my name. I had to turn around. Now. Yep. It's okay, I thought. Uh huh. There was no way the animatronics were still looking at me after leaving my seat. Yep. I turned around to look at Alex, but I saw at the corner of my eye the two heads staring at me. Holy cow! I dropped my cup of soda on the floor out of shock. An employee came over and asked me if I was alright. I asked him why the hell the two animatronics were staring at me. <laughs> Just as I was saying this, I heard Freddy on stage say it was time for intermission. Oh. I turned my head to look at the stage, and the curtains were already closing. 
The employee explained to me that the animatronics were designed to make eye contact with people yep. before you walked off. Mm. I could tell he hadn't taken me seriously. Mm -hmm. At least the curtains were closed and I couldn't see them anymore. But yeah. still, I, I, I just couldn't forget how they looked at me. Yep, they stared directly at me, but the way they stared at me, it, it didn't feel happy or friendly. It felt... It felt... Evil. Ooh. I asked Alex if he was ready to leave. Because I wanted to get the hell out of that place. Oh. He told me he wanted to see the rest of the show and play some arcade games. He asked me for my cell phone, telling me that he had to tell his mom something. <laughs> I handed him my phone, and he walked off to the arcade games. As he walked off, I noticed another mini stage away from the main stage. It was called Pirate's Cove. So that's where Foxy the stage had the is. The closed, and the tiny sign out front that read out of order. Holy cow! I asked what it was and why it was closed. He told me that the animatronic that lives on the stage, named Foxy, had a Ooh. technical malfunction in 1987. Causing it to bite out of a child's frontal lobe. Uh -huh. Hearing this news, I realized why this place had a troubled history and why it was closing. It shocked me that if such a horrific accident like this happened, how this place managed to stay open all this time. I was starting Ooh. to feel uncomfortable staying in that place. I, yeah. I wanted to leave as soon as possible. Yep. But I knew <sighs> Alex was having a good time. Mm -hmm. I saw him playing some arcade games. I sat back down and just waited. We could have played with them. wanted this show to end as soon as possible so yeah. we could leave. Mm -hmm. About five minutes passed until the intermission was over and the curtains were opening back up. A lot of the kids that had gotten up to play games didn't return to the show area. Who? Oh. I couldn't really blame them. I never found animatronics entertaining when I was younger either. Nope. Alex didn't come back either. Uh-uh. I know I should have probably just gotten away from the stage and played the games with Alex. But yeah, you could have listened. I curious. I needed to know... I needed to see what was going on, and if these things would still stare directly at me with their evil plastic eyes. Yeah, Freddy like... and Bonnie made jokes and interacted with the kids in the audience a bit. I love jokes. Before starting their third song. It was interesting, though. Most animatronics were attached to the floor, only able to move from the torso up. Mm -hmm. but these guys, their legs seemed to have free movement, allowing Freddy and his friends to walk across the stage. What's the difference incredible. between a guitar and a jellyfish? You can't strum a jellyfish. Yes, that's hilarious. The three robots made jokes and interacted with the kids. None of them even turning their heads in my direction. Yep. I felt a weird mix of feelings. Mm -hmm. Relief and discontentment. Why was I anticipating it? Why Ooh. I want them to stare at me? <laughs> The last song went by fast because of all my thoughts. Yep. As it ended, the three friends started to say their farewells to the children. At this point, I was like, they weren't going to stare at me anymore. Nope. And that maybe the worker was right. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were set to make eye contact with people. Yeah. It was almost 9 o'clock, which meant that the place was getting ready to close. Most of the parents and kids started to head for the doors. Ooh. Alex came to me and told me he had to go to the bathroom. Ah. The public men's room had an out-of-order sign on it. Oh. I asked an employee where he could use the bathroom, and she said that he could use the employee restroom. Perfect. The employee pointed Alex to the bathroom. Yep. There was an announcement that the place was now closed. Oh. I waited for a few more minutes. It seemed that I was the last person there. Even most of the employees had left. Quiet. I stood there growing impatient until I noticed something at the corner of my eye. No. It couldn't be. Nope. Uh-huh. Ooh. I felt like my heart sank into my stomach. I'm not afraid. I couldn't even choke up the words to call for an employee. Uh, that's getting scary right there, but I'm not afraid. I stormed down the hallway quickly, bursting into the employee restroom. I called for Alex. He didn't respond. Hmm. I looked under the stalls to see if I, anybody was in them, and I saw Alex's shoes. <laughs> I immediately felt relieved and stood by the door, waiting. I waited for what felt like another five minutes. I didn't want to. I didn't want to say anything to make him feel awkward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I asked if he was almost done in there because the place was closed. Mm -hmm. and he didn't respond. No. Nope. I started to become curious because I'd been staying in there for a long time, and he hadn't yeah. made a single sound. No. Nope. I walked up to the stall and knocked. As I knocked, the stall door creeped open to reveal nothing but Alex's shoes. What? That's odd. Well, I'm not scared. I'm just listening. I heard a 
come from outside the bathroom. It was a huge bang. Oh. It sounded like some kind of door closing. Oh my. I ran out of the bathroom to find that the main lights had been turned out. Yes. With the only source of light being the dimly lit night lights. Mm, holy cow. I made my way back to the lobby, or at least what I would call the lobby in this place. Yeah. I screamed for Alex, and I screamed for help, but to no avail. <gasps> this is insane, I thought. Oh my. The place completely shuts down in such a rush like this. Yeah, why? It was probably only ten after nine. I ran to the entrance, thinking maybe Alex was waiting outside. Yes. Only to realize that I was right. Uh huh. There was a giant metal door blocking the entrance. Ooh. I didn't know what to think of this. Nope. I didn't know how to react. Mm -mm. I was trapped in this place. Why would a place like this have a giant metal door like that? What were they trying to keep out? We're in. I had to call my parents, or the police, or someone. Alex was missing and I was trapped in there. I reached into my pocket for my phone. Empty. Uh. I remember that I had given it to Alex. Yeah. I tried to calm myself down. I can't be the only person in the building, I thought to myself. No. There had to be a phone somewhere in the building. Yeah. I walked down every hallway I could find looking for a phone. And occasionally shouting for somebody. The only phone I found so far was disconnected. Oh. If it weren't for the fact that Alex was by himself on a Saturday night. Yep. I wouldn't have been in such a panic. Mm-hmm. What the fuck happened to him? What? Why were his shoes in the stall? What if somebody had taken him? Bad news. I had to call the police, but there was no fucking phone. Ah. Uh. I walked down another hallway finding a door I hadn't checked yet that had a staff-only sign. I opened the door only to discover a room full of animatronic body parts. <coughs> the room smelled foul. Yeah. Something was rotting in there. Now standing in some kind of thick liquid substance. Yeah, and there's an endoskeleton. I got out of that room as quickly as I entered. Seeing those animatronic parts made me think that maybe Alex was sitting in the dining area waiting. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right. The dining area was right outside the hall I was in. So Employees I thought I might only. Well check. Navigating the barely lit building was pretty difficult, but also creepy. Yeah. When I got to the dining area, I called for Alex, but there was no response. Suddenly, I noticed something through the corner of my eye. Oh. I could see that the curtains on the stage had been opened again. Yeah. I, I, I could have sworn they'd been shut after the show. That's being odd. I didn't odd. want to turn my head. No. Nope. fear of what I was expecting to see. But before I could give myself more time to think, I turned my head to the stage to see Chica and Freddy on the stage. <gasps> there was a third one. I knew there was a third one. Yeah. The bunny. The bunny was missing. Oh. Where was the bunny? Mm-hmm. I was able to make out in the dark the heads of the two animatronics facing me. Ugh. I ran out of there as quickly <laughs> as I could, back into the dark hallways. I'm not afraid. I stopped to catch my breath, but I heard something coming down from the hall. There were footsteps coming my way. I was saved. Somebody was there. Yeah. I ran closer to the source of the footsteps. But it's not a person. It's a as I got closer, animatronic. I slowed down, noticing that the footsteps were very heavy. Mm hmm Unnaturally heavy for a human being. Uh-huh. I stopped thinking something wasn't right. Yes. The flickering light ahead of me didn't provide enough light to see the source of the footsteps yet. No. As the footsteps got closer, I could see the figure. It was the shadow of the bunny standing in the dark light from the hall. I was correct. I was unable to let out a scream. The robot started walking toward me. And at that instant, I ran to the nearest room, which happened to be a security room. I looked for anything to defend myself with. There were no weapons, but there was a button on the wall that seemed to be a door control. Yeah? The footsteps were getting closer, almost outside the room. Mm -hmm. I ran to the wall and threw my fist onto the button, <laughs> causing a giant door to close down to the floor. Oh. The robot banged on the door for a few seconds. Before the only noise was the buzzing sound of the dim fluorescent light in the room. Ooh. How is this possible? How could these animatronic performers have hey. the ability to roam freely? I bet when Why you touch that, that poster, me? Freddy's nose goes... These things, are they That's hilarious. Alive? These nightmares only thoughts once. kept pouring into my mind. That I almost didn't even notice the heavy footsteps coming from the opposite direction. I turned around, realizing there was another opening to the room, mm -hmm. with an identical door switch. I immediately sprang to the door, slamming my hand on the button, not wanting to see what was coming down that hall. Yep. I sat in the room, feeling safe for a few moments, until I remembered that Alex was missing. Oh! I had to find a way out of there. 
But there was no way I could step back into those hallways until I knew those things were gone. Yeah. There were two windows in the room facing either side with a view into the hallways. I couldn't see anything outside though. It was pitch black. Oh, turn on the, the light. The buttons on both sides. There were two buttons that were labeled light. Who? Maybe these lights were for outside the security office. Yeah. I needed to make sure that the robots weren't outside. I flipped the switch on the left side of the room to reveal the bunny's face staring at me through the glass. I hit the light Holy switch cow. again to turn it off. I didn't want to see that thing. Looked I didn't want to see right. the thing looking at me through the glass. I moved I wouldn't across either. the room to the other side, pressing the light switch. I almost fell to the floor in fear. It was Chica, the animatronic chicken, staring at me through the glass. Ooh, I know now her catchphrase. Disturbingly wide, revealing Brito? a second pair of teeth Brito? inside of her. Brito, it's funny. These teeth were smaller and seemed human-like. She banged her hands on the glass, keeping eye contact with me. I shut the light when I couldn't take the sight of the thing anymore. That's probably her catchphrase, because she loves pizza. Rolled up like a baby. This can't be happening. I kept telling myself. Yeah. Both robots reminded me of their presence with constant knocking on the glass. I feared that they might break the glass. Yeah. I didn't know what they were going to do to me if they got me, but I imagined the worst. Probably kill you. I couldn't put see you in a fray suit. Through the glass, but I knew they were still there, watching me. Mm -hmm. While looking around the room, I found a flashlight in one of the drawers. <gasps> and on the desk, I noticed a camera system. I turned it on, and a bunch of screens turned on, surveilling probably every room in the building. I looked at a screen displaying the show stage. Freddy the bear was on the stage, staring right into the camera. Mm, mm, I looked mm, at another screen mm, that displayed mm, the pirate's mm. cold Crap! earlier. There was an animatronic poking its head out of the curtains. <gasps> it's Foxy. I remember that the employee told me that I'm it not was afraid. Foxy, and why he was in disrepair. Uh -huh. He was still turned on? Oh. Then I started to realize it didn't matter if they were turned on or not. No. These things were fucking alive. Ah. And they were evil. Yeah. I could see the teeth in Foxy, and I knew that I didn't want to be anywhere near him. So I kept my eye on that camera to make sure he didn't move. Mm -hmm. I sat watching the camera for what felt like hours, and it probably was. The tapping on the glass had stopped, and the fox was still peeking its head out of its curtain. Oh. I had been so preoccupied with staring at the idle animatronic fox that I forgot to check any of the other cameras. I looked at the screen displaying the empty stage where Freddy was standing goes not too like, long ago. That catchphrase goes gone. like this. Dun 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 so, dun. Like all that. The camera screens filled with static. Except I was said this. Yar! That's hilarious. That I weird. I started to panic and looked around the room again for anything to help me. I found an old phone hidden behind a pile of papers. I picked it up to hear a dial tone. It was working. Yeah? I immediately started to dial for my parents. But Wait. I realized it would be a better idea to call the police. I redialed for 911. There was no ringing sound. No. Just silence from the phone. Yeah. I hung it up to try again, but didn't even get a dial tone this time. The bastards must have interfered with the phone. Ah. I got up to take one last peek out of the glass to see if the coast was clear to run. Mm -hmm. I turned the light on at the left side to reveal the shadow of the bunny standing in the dark corner. Huh? He's blocking that exit. Yeah. I turned the right side light on as well. To reveal the chicken still looking straight at me through the glass. Breach off! I should Breach off! Of the lights That's off. funny. I was trapped in there. There was no way I would try to outrun them. No. I didn't know how fast they were. I sat down in the chair, knowing my only option was to wait. Yep. I tried to rationalize the situation and calm myself down. Yep. Alex is eight. It's not like he's a toddler, mm -mm. I thought. And plus, he has my cell phone. Yeah. He probably already called his or my parents, and I'm sure they're all on their way here now. I convinced myself. Yep, yep. I checked my watch. It was almost 12 already. <laughs> the cameras were still filled with static, and I was unable to do anything at that point. All I could do was shut my eyes and wait. I shut my eyes, thinking that everything would be fine come morning time. I still don't know how, but I had actually fallen asleep. Be spending a night at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza? Not a nice choice, kind dude. Of situation was possible. Like, your body would be in fight or flight mode. Your adrenaline would be rushing, your body just wouldn't let you fall asleep. But somehow I did. Yeah. Hmm. I woke to the sickening sound of familiar banging on the glass. It wasn't just a dream. I was still in that godforsaken place. I checked my watch and saw that it was 4 a.m. I had been asleep for four hours. Oh. 
I noticed that the light in the room was a lot dimmer, almost to the point where I couldn't even see the papers that were hanging on the wall anymore. No. The thumping was coming from the right side. I didn't even turn on the light because I didn't want to see that sickening face of that thing again. Yeah. Suddenly the light flickered. I knew the power dying at a time like this would be deadly. Yeah. Because these doors seemed to be powered by the electricity. I made a plan to run as fast as I could through the left door if yep. the power went out. Mm -hmm. It was the only choice I had. Yeah. The light grew dimmer and flickered even more. I took mm. one last look at the camera screens to see that the curtain at Pirate's Cove had been completely opened and Foxy was nowhere in sight. Just as I saw this, the room went dark. The camera screens turned off and the power doors opened. The power was out. But that's when Freddy Fazbear shows up. Turning the flashlight on. The bunny wasn't anywhere in sight, to my luck. As I ran down the hall, I slipped in something on the floor. I fell hard on my knee. I felt like I broke it. I moaned in pain, but tried my hardest not to scream. Mm -hmm. I felt the substance that I slipped in with my fingers. I smelled it. It was blood. Ew! I was laying in a big puddle of blood. I immediately assumed it was the blood of Alex and almost let out a cry of pain and sickness. I tried to get on my feet, but the pain in my knee was unbearable. I started to crawl down the hall with blood all over my arms and legs. I didn't know where to go or how to escape. They would surely catch me now. Yep. My luck seemed to have run out because I heard heavy footsteps coming fast down the hall. <gasps> I had to act quickly, Ooh. but I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. I looked around me and found I heard, the door. I hear footsteps too. I didn't care too. what room it led to. I just had to get out of the hallway. The footsteps were getting closer. I shut the flashlight and managed to reach the doorknob, pushing the door open. I crawled into the room and pulled the door shut as quickly and quietly as I could. Oh. <laughs> I waited in the darkness as the footsteps came closer and closer yeah. until they were right outside the door. And then it stopped. Whatever it was was right outside the door. Uh huh. I put my hand over my mouth to muffle my breathing yeah. and leaned against the door to block it in case the thing tried to get in. Yeah. It was probably about 10 seconds, but it felt like a minute before the sound of pots and pans banging around echoed across the building. Oh, yeah. Footsteps move away from the door. I felt that it was safe to no longer hold my breath and to turn the flashlight on. The light revealed that I had been sitting in a supply closet. I looked around for any kind of weapon. That's and to my luck. I found a crowbar sitting uh -huh. on a ledge. That's Bonnie's favorite room to this hide. Was seemingly the perfect weapon to bash a robot in the face with. Ooh. I waited about a minute until I thought the coast was clear. Yeah. I slowly opened the door and crawled out of the room. My knee wasn't hurting too bad anymore, but I didn't want to take the chance of putting pressure on it. Yep. Crawling was quieter anyway. Mm -hmm. As I crawled through the pitch black hallways, banging into walls, I noticed that almost all of the floors in these hallways were sticky. Yep. The stickiness caused my skin to make a peeling sound off the floor each time I lifted my hands or legs. Aww. I didn't think too deep into the stickiness or anything for that matter. Yeah. I was too focused on getting out of there and finding Alex. Yep. As I crawled down the hall, I noticed moonlight shining in through a window in a room up ahead. Pretty moonlight. I hoped the window would be low enough and big enough for me to reach in fifth room. <laughs> Probably. I crawled to the doorway, but the sight of two big long eyes stopped me. The <gasps> eyes were fixed on mine, even in the dark. It's Foxy. I turned on the flashlight and shined it at the figure. It was Foxy. I was correct. He looked like a broken, unfinished animatronic with pieces missing altogether. Yep. His legs didn't even seem to be finished as his robotic legs were not covered up by plastic fur. No. And his feet were just two pieces of metal. He raised his hook hand and started moving quickly towards me. Run, little I fella. I to get up on my feet, ignoring the pain on my knee. I held up the crowbar, ready to swing it like a baseball bat. As soon as the robot got close enough, I swung the crowbar to hit his robotic leg, causing him to fall to the floor. I took this opportunity to smash his robotic head numerous times with the crowbar, causing gears to fly out of its face. The eyes were still glowing, fixed on me, but his legs seemed broken, and that was enough to stop him from getting me. Yeah. I hopped closer to the window. I hear laughter. All the robots no doubt heard what just happened, so I hurried. I reached the window. Luck was on my side, because the window I'm was reachable and big enough to squeeze through. I swung the crowbar at the window, but it didn't break. I suddenly heard many pairs of footsteps coming from down the hall. I swung the crowbar Ooh. again. The window cracked, but didn't break. Yeah. The footsteps were right outside the room now. I swung the crowbar one more time, as hard as I could. 
finally causing the glass to shatter. I took a painful leap off both legs to reach the window. I pulled myself up and was about to jump out the window until something grabbed my leg. I turned around to see Freddy Fazbear standing behind me, holding onto my good leg, Aww. along with Chica and Bonnie standing behind him. Why would you leave? Asked Freddy. Without thinking, I pulled my leg up, causing pain in my knee, and kicked it Aww. back with full force into the animatronic's head. This caused it to lunge back a bit and loosen its grip on my leg, giving mm -hmm. me just enough time to jump out of the window. I didn't care about the returning pain to my knee. I hopped away from the building as fast as I could, with the only sound I heard being the screaming of the robots to come back. Aww. I screamed Alex's name at the top of my lungs three or four times before getting in my car and speeding to my house. Yeah. I called the cops and explained the whole situation. Duh. I then called my parents afterwards. My mother picked up the phone after calling three times, asking why I was calling so late. She screamed into the phone, begging me to tell her it was a joke when I told her I lost Alex. No. When the cops arrived, I showed them a picture of Alex and explained to them about the robots. I Duh. told them that the robots must have been somehow programmed to kill any intruders at night. That's what they do. To seem as realistic as possible. They looked at each other like I was crazy, like anyone would. That's why it's called Power Nights at Freddy's. However, that they would have the police department look into it. Mm-hmm. After investigating, the police found nothing. No blood. Nope. No broken glass. Uh -uh. No foul smells. Uh -uh. No Alex. Nope. And all the animatronics were in their proper places. <sighs> it's been almost a month. Alex was never found. My aunt and uncle still cry their eyes out every day. My parents Alex might have been me. killed but by the animatronics. What kills me the most is knowing the evils that are inside of that place, mm -hmm. that family-oriented place, and that even if I told anyone what happens, they would think I'm crazy. Well, I think I he's can't prove funny. What to Alex, but I know that whatever happened to him, those fucking robots had everything to do with it. How rude! Mm -hmm.